So here's the situation. I just had a neighbor call me and saying, you know, he'd be willing to come up here and spread this dirt for me. But all he's got is today. So I think I'm going to have to make the call and go ahead and just cover this stuff up. I don't have time to uh, try to come up with a game plan to maybe save it. And, excuse me. And he is uh, hes kind of on a time crunch, but he's nice enough to offer, you know, to help a guy out. So I guess it is what it is, you know. But look. Well, do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? They're everywhere now. Do you believe? Another Jubilee in here someplace. I've seen it. Oh, yeah, there he is. Just hanging. Big old watermelon just hanging. Oh, I just kicked one. Let's go over here. Look, Jubilee. This watermelon plant is just doing leaps and bounds. But let's go over and look at the pumpkin. I don't see anything going on with the pumpkin. Uh, kind of bittersweet. I had fun growing this stuff. But, you know, it is what it is. It's time to make more progress at the longhouse. You know what I mean? No more little garden. So I'm figuring it out before winter time. I need to get another three loads of dirt between 20 and 30 tons each at $340 a load. So another about $1,100 worth of dirt before winter time. And I should be okay out here until spring. And we're done. Neighbor did a real good job spreading this dirt. I'll end up putting another load. Well, hang on there, four wheel drive dog. Uh, right in front of Jamie, I'm gonna have another load, and then there's gonna be one load right here, and then probably two net down here on the bottom. Okay, back here at the house, I've been working on this wall. I was hoping they had four foot by 100 foot rolls of this single bubble foil insulation but all they had was six foot wide by 125 feet what i'm doing now is just measuring it in seven foot lengths and, and going vertical with it i can do it in about two and a half pieces and also what i'm doing is i'm i'm taking the bubble foil and going over the wall joist and then coming in an inch and laying a staple on each side so that's going to give me another little air gap between whatever type of covering I put on this wall, whether it be drywall or paneling, or I've even thought about doing like a like a thin like a T111, just untreat it and then come back and I can paint it to whatever. But I don't know. But so I've got some of an air gap between the outside metal and this, and then there will be another air gap, like I said, from here in between the wall paneling or whatever. So. In my head, I think that would be good, but I was also not sure if I should make the white face in or make the the silver face in and the white face out. My gut kind of told me to keep the shiny out, so that's what I did. And this is what I've got so far. And I'm not worried about little area gaps like this. You know, a little heat to come in, and if I have to, I'll take some scrap regular insulation and just kind of fill it in along the top but I think that'd be just fine and then I'm just I'm cutting little slits you know in it so I can pull out my outlets and uh, so yeah I think that'll work really really good 
and once I get this wall finished I think I'm going to go ahead and pre-cut to do this wall at a later date I don't think I'm going to pull that installation out since this wall's not it doesn't have any water damage except right around the windows and I'm going to repair that you know it's not hurting by leaving it in there and if I don't disturb it I won't have all that in the all the dust and stuff like that in the air anyway so I'm just going to cover it with the uh, bubble foil and that would be that and then the last thing I'm going to do I should have enough left I think I can pull up all this flooring and go unscrew it and lay down the bubble foil in between the outside and the bottom of the floor so that's what I'm going to be doing in the next couple of days what are you doing doggy? What are you doing? Man, I'm just not it, I'm I'm not feeling it at all. But well, it's been easy tearing up these corner boards. That's one good thing about them not putting it in right. But I've got a problem. As you can see, Right there in the corner, there's considerable amount of water damage on the, I guess that's a 2x6 board going across the top half of the trailer frame and then coming down this way. So that kind of so creates a problem that I can't necessarily fix. Let's see here, let's uh. Eh, it's not too rotten, but it's rotten. Man, it's soft. So our water is leaking through this, through the roof, and it's coming down, and it's just channeling right here. So, in order to fix this, I'll, I would probably have to cut this completely off here, and cut it off here, and patch it, but I'm not going to do it. For the simple fact that in order to do this right and replace the whole board I would have to take all the metal off this corner on the outside and on this side and replace that whole board so that would mean undoing all the floor joists and uh, doing that I'm not gonna do it I'm just not it's not the right way to fix it but I'm just not going to that's, that's a lot of work so, yeah, it's soft right up in here. So, best thing I can do is uh, maybe I'll add, I don't even have any more 2x6. Hmm, what's going to say? I could just knock this piece here off or, or cut it and add a piece to it you know but I don't even have the board so looks like I'm not fixing it guys what I'm gonna do is replace the floor and that's all I'm gonna do now that I got some more of the last piece of original floor in the kitchen pulled up I thought I would go over again for you guys how I cut the floor out next to the wall now if you followed me for any length of time, you know I basically have three main tools, well, say four main tools for this job. Now, there might be a few little other things, but these are the main four. One is a good hammer. And I'm not talking about a regular, like, claw hammer. I think this is about a two and a half pound sledge, maybe a five pound, I don't know. But yeah, that's it. It looks like the hammer that Super Mario used. I use that. And I have a good pry bar, okay? And like you said, it's not real long. It's about, uh, I'm going to say about 12 inches. About 12 inches long, maybe a little bit more. I've never said that in a sentence before. <laughs> so, and a circular saw. And when you have a tool like this, you have to call it a circular saw because that's what it is. Unless... It says skill saw. Then you can call them skill saws. <laughs> you talked about something that aggravates contractors and, and builders. Everybody calls one of these a skill saw. It's not a skill saw. It's a circular saw. 
But you can only use it if you got skills. So, there you go. <laughs> and the handy dandy, super trustful, awesome, fantastic Dremel uh, Multimax tool. Now, that's basically what I use. And what I do is I get up next to the wall or next to a piece of the broken floor. Let me, uh, I gotta get me some some camera stands or something because this is it's just hard to uh you know do what you got to do with two hands let's get this untangled okay take your saw and what you want to do what was that oh i thought i seen a snake so first thing you want to do is make sure that your saw is zeroed out where it's perfectly straight up and down which this is kind of leaning so i'll have to fix that next thing you want to do is look at the the depth of your blade you only want your blade to be as deep as your floor you want to try to avoid cutting through the floor joists at all possible so that's what you got to do and usually you just take this oh, this one here again one hand come on dummy Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe I'm got to be smarter than the tool. Here we go. And take that. And you want to lift this up. Because you want your saw blade to be below that thing. Guard or whatever you call it. I don't know what you call it. See? You want it to be down like so. But you don't want your blade to be past the floor. So I'll have to fine tune that to get that right. So let me get this squared away. Now that I got my saw uh, set to where it needs to be, you want to make sure you take your pry bar and you get all the nails and all the staples out along this bottom board because your saw is going to be pushed up against it like that. And you're going to go this way and you don't need to be catching on stuff. So get all the screws, nails, and staples out. Now that you got all the staples either pulled out or nails pulled out or smacked in or whatnot, you can move on to the next step. And a lot of times these little staples, I'll just knock them in best I can because they're just kind of a pain in the ass. You just don't want your saw to get hung up on. Um, oh, there's a nail. So you, you miss a lot of stuff. There we go. Get out. I know my camera work is really good on this video. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and I know a lot of you guys are going to ask, what's up with the duct? The duct work. Am I going to fix the duct work? Nope. As you can see, throughout the years, there's been so much stuff put into the duct system. That's why as soon as I get to it, I'll mash that all back down and probably take that insulation and shove in the hole and i'm just going to cover it up there's not going to be any vent system in this trailer at all because i'm not going to pay the money to have some guy come in here and clean out this duct system which will probably be three or four hundred dollars and i'm not taking a chance on blowing all that stuff in the air all the rat poop or mouse poop and whatever kind of poops down there so i'm just covering it up and i'll eventually if i get ac in here i'll use like a you know one of these ductless systems that just they've got the unit outside and then you got the big blower that goes into the corner of the room someplace and it just does its thing so that's what i'm going to do plus it's a lot cheaper so okay so let me go ahead and get this cut out see now that i got that cut out i can just kind of break out the pieces and there we go all she wrote. Please don't knock that over. If your floor under your wall is perfectly good, like it's not rotten at all, you can see all your bottom boards in nice shape, you don't have to dig the old floor out from underneath of it. It is totally okay to cut it, you know, cut your floor and let your floor stick out this far. And then you just butt the new floor panel up against that. That's totally fine. Just try to make sure your line or your uh, you know, where it fits is nice and is nice and tight. Leave it about an eighth inch gap. Uh, 
but the only reason why I'm really doing this is because I had a feeling when I started this side that this wall here was going to be rotten. But since I went ahead and dug that side out there, I'm just going to go ahead and dig it out here and remove this bottom board. That way I can get my whole board up underneath the whole thing completely. And then just put a new 2x4 along this whole bottom. So that's why I'm doing that. You don't have to dig out a perfectly good floor, you know, like I said, that's underneath the wall. Another thing, make sure you have plenty of 2 by 4 on hand because regardless if you dig out all the old rotten floor underneath a good wall and you want to slide your floor underneath of it, make sure you've got your 2 by 4s that you can cut and fit in between your floor joists, okay, usually 24 inches. Uh, put your 2 by 4 in here and screw it to this. That way when you put your new floor in, you can screw through the wall and down into actual two, good 2x4. Two and plus it just gives the outer edge of the board more structure, strength, whatever you want to call it. But if you don't take out the old floor underneath the wall and you've got about 2 inches sitting out here, you know, so if it's sitting like that and say this is your cut, to, you know, this is where you cut the old floor out and your floor is sticking out that far, you want to put your 2x4 here again so you got a place to screw your floor right into here and it just makes everything nice and strong -er. <laughs> so. so now all i got to do is come through with a hammer and beat this out and try to get <clears throat> as much as i can out from underneath it and look at all that yumminess so also do as I say, not as I do. Get a face mask and use ear protection when using a circular saw or a skill saw if you got skills. Because it, it definitely makes it a lot better. So boys and girls, I've got my plywood cut and this is the scrap piece off of it. I'm going to cut this in half and screw that into to the top of that vent to cover that hole. Sit my plywood in here and that would be it for this video. I'm sure you guys really don't care about seeing the plywood put down. But in the next video, I will have that put down and I will also have that single full bubble wrap. I'm going to show you guys me throwing that down over top of this in the whole left side of the kitchen. So keep your eyes peeled for that. That'll be in about a week or so. So that's it, guys. Girls, like and subscribe. See you later.